Okay guys, I am going to do a video for the installation of everything you can possibly put on the outside mirrors of the WRX. Again, WRX, not an STI. This is a 2018 WRX Limited. I'm assuming that the wiring is the same amongst all WRXs from 15 up. Not 100% sure, but I'm guessing at least this is better than the STI for those of us who uh, have a WRX because all the videos I found were STI this and STI that. And I noticed um, for the DRL function for this tail light or turn signal, the wiring inside the door is different colors. So I wanted to address that and everything. The mirror, this new turn signal, and the puddle slash welcome lights, mine has a provision for that. I'm not sure if every car has a provision for the puddle lights. Mine does. I know some cars don't have the turn signals with them from the factory. I know there's a kit out there that can make it so that you can put a turn signal into the mirror if you want. Luckily, mine came with the outside turn signals. So I'll go over the part numbers real quick. The mirror part number, I got the golden tinted because I think it goes well with the scheme of my car. I'll part number for the turn signal and the part number for the puddle lamps that go under here. So here's the puddle lamps or welcome lamps, whatever you want to call them. They're a genuine Subaru part. I ordered these from Subi Speed. They're like a hundred and I want to say 180 bucks or 160 bucks. This is a full kit, which comes with an add fuse right here. And the uh, actual puddle lamps. These, like, they turn on for 30 seconds when you unlock your car. Um, maybe when you lock it, I don't know. But I'll, I'll see when I install them. But I know they turn on for, like, 30 seconds when you unlock your car. Um, and then it comes with the wiring to run from the left side and from the right side of the car. And part number for the... These are the JDM toy outside mirror turn signals. One cool thing about these is it has a light that blinks right here too on the end. And these are, again, the DRL and sequential function. Here's that part number. Again, JDM toy. Here's the part number for the gold tinted mirrors. My car had all this stuff on it already. It had the, um, well, it didn't have the LED turn signal on the actual mirror, but it had the heated and the blind spot monitoring. But now it's going to have the LED turn signal. That's like a triangular shaped LED and it looks pretty cool. There's a part number from there. I ordered that from the Mod Garage. These were 174 bucks. And there you go. There's the part numbers. I'll get into real quick how to wire these in. The mirror part, they hook into the top just with like little hooks. And then on the bottom, there's some tabs that like squeeze tabs or whatever that snap in. There's a hook, a hook, and then this tab, that tab that matches up with those two holes, those two, those two holes or slots or whatever, that hole and that hole. I had to kind of pry be behind this mirror fixture. There's some openings and stuff back here. I had to pry one of them, and then I pushed the mirror at the top in, and then I kind of finagled it out. It was kind of a pain. Just take your time with it. The wiring, because I have the blind spot monitoring, there's those wires. It just connects to a plug that was already um had the factory provision in there for me. Blue and orange or bluish and peach wire. You just put them in those little tabs and run it down, plug it right in. Very self-explanatory. And then there, there you go. I have a new turn signal function on the outside of the mirror, which includes a black wire and a black wire with a white stripe. With the kit comes a plenty of wiring. There's the one for the other light. Plenty of wiring. I plugged the black into black and the black and white into the black and white. Very self-explanatory. I ran that wiring to the 
outside of the housing through there. You'll see it on the other side in a minute. That big bundle of white wire there is for the DRL function on this. So the other thing on the mirror that I had was heated mirrors, two black wires. Um, on the factory mirror, I noticed that the orientation of the spades were vertical. They're one on top of the other like that. I repackaged my mirror. I guess I'm picky like that. Um, here it's more horizontal oriented, but I, the mirror, the wires were stiff. And so the top was on the top and the bottom was on the bottom. And I just plugged the top one into the left and the bottom one on the right. I did contact a Subaru technician at a shop here in town, um, actually at the dealer. And the guy told me it doesn't matter which black wire plugs into which spade because it's just a heating element. So it doesn't matter which black wire plugs into which spade. So there's the actual mirror. And you saw the white wire bundled in there for the DRL on the turn signal. I'm going to kind of, I kind of hooked those top hooks in. I didn't push it all the way in yet because I still have to take the whole mirror off to do some more wiring. Um... On the turn signal, one thing I noticed was when you do install it, push this tab all the way up and flush against this part because it helps it line up here. Where there's like a little tab that goes into a slot right there. So it helps it line up better when you push it all the way up. Also, there's a little gap between that tab and the plastic on the housing. You can see the tab from the light and the space there. I'm gonna get a little spacer because if you tighten the screw all the way down against it, it bends that tab some and I just don't want it to break. So that's one thing I noticed about this particular JDM toy light. From the light it comes out long white wire for the DRL function. The black and red go to a black plug the white plug is from the factory and in there is a green and white wire attaching to that plug. See, I can, there you go. You can see those, the green and white. Now to get the turn signal to work on the mirror, I just splice the wires into this turn signal here. To do that, I connected the you can see there's those same wires that I ran through from the mirror right here. The black with the white stripe and then the black connect to those two wires there. The white goes to the black with white strip and the black goes to the green. Now I wired it up in the mirror housing. Had I to do it over again on this side, I would have taken that black wire not cut so much off of it. I would have ran it down in here and found the white and green wire down in here and wired it there so I would have had enough room up here to work with. I did it. It was a pain in the butt. I pulled that white plug out and there was only like two inches of wire and it was a pain in the butt. I used these little butt connectors from AutoZone. They come with the heat shrink tubing and they were even these weren't small enough. I had to squeeze the heck out of them to hold the wires. <laughs> the wires are pretty tiny. I bunched up this bundle of white wires that are connected to the turn signal. This is for the left side of the car. I bunched that up in here because when I take the mirror off, I'll have to grab it with a weed whacker line or a coat hanger or something and pull it through this whole thing. I'm also going to pull the wiring from the puddle slash welcome lights through there and show you how to wire those up. This white wire connects to a wire behind the door panel. And I'll show you what wire that is. It's different than the STI. That's why I'm whole reason I'm doing this. But to show you that the way I wired it works, I'm going to turn my car on and do the functions of the mirror. So you can see that and I'll show you the outside uh, turn signal as well. So there's that BSM light turning on real quick. Here's the turn signal. It works, that's beautiful, I like it. And then I'll leave the turn signal on, I'll show you the sequential function of the outside turn signal. Of 
Cool. And here's that again for you. That's kind of neat. So there you go, guys. Now you know that wiring works. I'm going to have to make another video and then like put it together. You'll see me in a second. For me, it'll be a while. To get the door panel off <clears throat> behind the door handle, there's that little tab. You just snap it open. Then in there, there's another little tab. You snap it open and there's just a Phillips head screw in there. Take those two Phillips head screws out. And what I did was I grabbed down here and just pulled and pulled across the bottom and up across the top. And I could hear and feel the retainer clips popping out. And then you just lift the door panel up and off it comes. And on the back side of the door panel, there's a few plugs there. And then you have to detach the door handle and lock stuff from here. It's pretty self-explanatory. Anyway, there's that. Some of the retainer clips came out. And a tip I saw in another video is to put some electrical tape on all of these. And then put the clips back in. And also put some electrical tape on the holes in the actual door itself to help with some vibrating noises like when you're playing your your music or if you're driving on a rough road that can cause vibrations. So there's just a little tip that I learned from watching another video. Um, another little tip I learned was when you open your door and it's, you know, you turn it on and it's blinging at you, you know, bling, bling, and it gets annoying after a while. You just push this, but the other door's open, so it doesn't work. Anyway, I'm going to show you the wire to connect that white wire to for the DRL function on the turn signal. And so you just push this to make the buzzing, the blinging stop. <laughs> then it thinks the door is closed. Um, so I've got the power on. <clears throat> if you want to be absolutely certain that you got the right wire, even though I'm going to show you the color, but if for some reason the colors are different on your vehicle, there's a little way, quick way to find out to make sure. So I got a little test light here. What I did was work perfectly was I grounded, I put the ground, it's, it's a black wire, but it's got a red little cover on it that makes you kind of think it's a positive connection of some kind, but it's actually a ground. So I grounded it to that because it's bolted nice and into the metal. And then I came over here and poked all the terminals. It's kind of hard to do while I'm holding the phone. Just keep poking all the terminals. And there you have it. It's down on the bottom on that green and black wire right there, green and black wire. That's the only wire that gets power when the car's on. So that's what I'm gonna put the white wire that I showed you earlier that's bundled up in the mirror. I'm gonna T-tap that in there. You can see I removed, pulled the, pulled the insulation just a little bit apart to have a good connection with that darn T-tap. I don't like T-taps and I don't like, I wish you could just snap them on and they work every time, but you gotta work with the wire sometimes to get them to get a good connection. So there we go. It's, it runs on the bottom there. That wire goes to the bottom row of uh, the terminals. There we go. So we figured that out. I'm going to show you how to take the mirrors out. I've got a little lamp here. 
a battery powered this comes in handy sometimes this little battery powered light <laughs> so anyway um we have those two bolts and then one more bolt right right there you have to take those three bolts out to get the to get the mirror out once i get that mirror out oh by the way um you're going to want to unplug this. I plugged it back in because when I was making another video for you guys, I forgot to plug it back in. <laughs> the turn signal and everything, none of them worked. I was like, what happened? Well, I forgot to plug that back in. So unplug this. That goes up through the mirror. And so anyway, I'll get the mirror out and I will show you further how to do all this. All right, guys, I got the mirror out and it didn't just fall out when I undid those bolts. Be very careful when you're getting those, pulling those bolts out. I had to put my finger in there and hold the bolt against the socket to make sure it didn't fall down into the door. That would be a pain. So be careful when you take those bolts out, those three bolts. I'm going to take this off. Kind of hard to do one-handed just pull this rubber piece off it's on there pretty good actually there we go so that's off you can see the harness going up in there and what i did is i grabbed some pretty stiff red wire I think that'll work and some electrical tape and I'm gonna tape all the wires that need to go through there the puddle light wires and the DRL wire for the outside turn signal I'm gonna run those down through there and yep so I'll be right back okay so I I have this white wire all strewn out and Make sure when you're doing the puddle lights, use the package. There's two packages of red and black wire, this one and this one. You want to use the one with the most wire on the right side of the car, which I'm working on now, because that wire has to run across the firewall behind the dash and all to get to the connection near the driver's side. So use the most wire on that side. And then the correct puddle light for the right side is the one that says VA000. And I mean, you can tell by the shape of it, it's pretty self-explanatory. There's just a little, one little Phillips head screw holding that plate in there. And then you can see how that one just goes right in place. So take that screw out, put, slide that one in, put that screw in, and then this is a plug and play. And one side of the, black and red is a plug plugs in on the back of the puddle light uh, the plastics being goofy weird reflection there but it plugs in right in the back there so I'm gonna put that puddle light on then I'll run the wire and I'll show you how I ran the wire okay guys <clears throat> I discovered that this fairly stiff wire that I picked, that, that red wire to pull the wire through was not stiff enough to go through in there. Through that hole where the harness goes through, that hole in the middle there. So I cut a coat hanger and even that was a pain to get through there because once it gets through there, I had to like bend this part of it up to get it to go further so I could have room to tape the wires on there. I'm hoping that I can pull it through without the tape and wires coming off. It's kind of, it's kind of hard in there. It's like really in there, even just the coat hanger. So you want to be careful to pull that coat hanger so it doesn't scratch your mirror housing, you know? Um, so I'm going to try to pull that through. I can't do it while holding the phone so 
I will try to pull it through and I'll be right back. Okay guys, um, so bear with me. Um, I tried pulling it through the first time and the, ta the wires just came right off of the coat hanger. It's a real tight fit with that tape around the coat hanger. There's like a rubber cylindrical shaped grommet with the wires coming out of it. And you gotta get that through there. And I might have too much tape, but I had to tape it more to put, to hold the wires more securely on that coat hanger. Um, I might try a big long zip tie if I can't work it this way. And I decided to also unplug the mirror stuff and get that darn mirror out of the way. I was afraid I was going to scratch it, so I just unplugged it. These black plugs here that plug into the new turn signal are super hard to unplug. I haven't been able to unplug one yet. Maybe if I had two pairs of pliers to hold each end, but I was holding one with my hand and one with the pliers, and I couldn't get them unplugged. They're really on there. Shoot. Anyway, um, if you can get that mirror out of the way, this will, it'll make this a lot easier. I had to kind of bend the coat hanger as I pulled to get it down in there, and I will be back there with me. Hi, right, guys. Um, so the only way I could do it was I... I actually tried to smash all three wires between this end of the coat hanger. I had to do it in such a way so that it was as, you know, as small as possible to get through that dang thing. I had to kind of finagle the coat hanger because it's kind of bent weird. I had to kind of move the wires around down in, you know, down in there um, where that hole is. I had to kind of finagle the coat hanger around and twist it and stuff and then it slid right through um, so got the black wire for the puddle light in through and I'm gonna do this same thing for each wire separately so there you go there's my rig it's as squeezed together as possible I squeezed that thing so hard on the other wires that it actually cut the wires <laughs> and here are those pieces that I cut them right off, and so there there they went. There's plenty of wire. I'm not worried about if the wire is going to make it all the way across the car because, I mean, look at that. So I'll do the other two wires, and then I'll be back. Got two of them through. I had to do them individually. Um, it's just too hard to clamp them without cutting them if there's three of them on there. So you got to kind of... If it's if you're using a coat hanger, you gotta like bend that and pull down or pull it out. There we go. Okay, now it's down in there. You can see it there. Now I'm gonna like I have to kind of finagle it to get it good with the opening of that deal. kind of stuck. You got to kind of finagle it a little. There we go. So I got that. So there's that. You can see that I had to put the coat hanger through three separate times and I just cut the little end off each time because it's just too hard to unbend that once you crimp it down and a little tip if you're using the coat hanger make a nice little I made a nice little kind of handle on the end of the coat hanger and so I can you know pull it easier um, it's kind of hard it was a pain in the butt <laughs> also another tip I put some electrical tape there Hopefully I didn't scratch. I did that so to avoid scratching the... Hang on a second. I'm going to take this tape off and see if I scratched it. And it looks good. I did not scratch it. Good. That I put two pieces of electrical tape any, just to be sure. So... Um, what else? You know, just you have to take your time, guys. Um, if you can find a long zip tie with a little small 
end on it, you might be able to pull all the wires through at once. Um, but again, that opening there is pretty small with those wires going through it. You can see it, all the wires going in there and it's a pretty tight fit. So anyway, I got those through. Um, I'm just gonna, I'm gonna snip that end off and then uh, pull the wires through carefully by hand and then I'll continue on. I got everything pulled through in there. Um, of course I disconnected the mirror so I can have room. And a few tips on this. Plug that white plug into the puddle lamp down there. Plug that in before you install the puddle lamp because you can't get to it once that thing's in there. Pull those red and black wires around like that and then kind of pull them around that plastic sticking up there. That way they're not up under here where this mirror adjuster can crush the wires. I made a little hole in this rubber piece on the bottom of the mirror and I just used another, I made another hook. I've made, I don't know, four or five hooks with the coat hanger today to pull those through. And there's, like I said, if you pull by the end and you mess up the end of the wire, I mean, there is a ton of wire. So you're not gonna, you're not gonna run out of wire. You're gonna have plenty of wire to go across the car for the puddle lamps to install in the location that I'll show you. The puddle lamp, it's kind of, I don't know, there's a felt piece on the end there for some reason. I don't know why. Um, oh, okay, okay. I get it now. I've been wondering about this. So, Again, it's just the screw that puts it in and that felt is there because when the housing goes back around, it'll be flush with the clear part and be pushed against that felt. I get it now. I'm wondering why there was a gap there. Of course, the housing isn't over top of it. I still have that gap, like I showed you earlier, with that tab on the turn signal and the plastic on the fixture. Like I said, I'll put, I don't know, an eighth of an or sixteenth of an inch spacer with maybe a neoprene washer or something in there before I snug that up so I don't bend that tab right there and break it. And so far, so good. It's been, the hardest part was, <laughs> I'll show you, that black plug up, up at the top plugged into that white plug down in there. That, that right there. I had to pull that plug through on the back, which was a pain in the butt because I wired the, see all the wiring I did earlier, the white and green and uh, to these wires here. I did that all up in the housing. Like I said, it'd be easier probably to go down here and wire. All right guys, one thing I noticed that wire for the turn signal in the mirror, I routed it so that it wouldn't interfere with this clip going into this and so that it would snap back in place. I zip tied it to the little red and white wire and those little retainers hold them little wires in there pretty darn tight so they're not going anywhere. This should work. Um, I'll let you know if it snapped back into place and I'll move on. Then I'll move on to putting them on the car, the mirror on the car and running the wiring. So just wanted to add that in there for you as a little tip. And there you go. Um, here's the final assembly. You can see the puddle or welcome light, the yellow tinted mirror. I think it looks really good. And then the new turn signal. Now, finally, <laughs> it's been a little painstaking with this wiring, um, but now finally I will go out and put it back on the car. I put the mirror back in with those three bolts. 
And I forgot to mention earlier, you gotta peel this plastic away, but it's really easy to peel away and really easy to stick back on. It's got this goopy stuff. I ran the wiring through the square hole up in here. You can't see it really um, with the way this is, but there's a square hole right where you put the mirror. You'll see it. It's self-explanatory. So I ran the black and red for the puddle lights through here. I still got to run it through here and then through this tube in here that tube thing and then have it come out under here so that'll be fun anyway for the drl i just took a exacto knife and cut a little hole in the plastic in that and that like kind of soft rubbery material there and i brought it over here and i t-tapped it right into the green and black wire and let's see if it works and then I'll show you a few little things that'll help you when you when you're installing all these things. Uh, let's see. So So that BSM works. Turn signal works. see if the turn signal out here still works good all that wiring is still intact after messing around with this mirror assembly for i don't know hour and a half or something and let's see if the drl works <clears throat> oh yes nice so the camera it, they the lights kind of blend together, but you can really see the two separate strips in person. There's a definite distinction between the two lines, but I think they're kind of bright for the camera, so it doesn't really. Well, there you go. Get closer. You can see the two distinct DRLs, and they're just as bright as my front uh, DRLs down here on the fog bezels. And so that's cool. I'm excited. I got the right side done. I just got to, well, I got the right side turn signal and DRL and mirror done. Still got to do the puddle light. Um, there she is right there. Now, one thing I forgot to mention, um, I showed you about that black plug and when I was on, at the table in my house and showed you how to get it through here if you wire up here and don't have enough room. And if you have to pull that black plug in, plug goes in here, make it vertical, pull, a, pull it flush toward this with a screwdriver and then shimmy it kind of diagonal and then up. So all the wiring's still intact, thankfully. There's the plug for the puddle light. And there was something else. Well, I showed you how I zip tied the wires behind the mirror so everything would, nothing would block it from getting in there. And yeah. Oh, that's what I want to show you. When I started screwing in the lower screw here, and I put a couple of neoprene little washers behind it, I noticed that the light was really kind of coming forward up here. Well, then I loosened this top screw and this changed position to more low, a little lower and more to the right. Earlier in my video, I said, make sure that's flush on top. And I was wrong. Once you tighten in the lower screw, you can tell that there's some tension on that up there. So just loosen it a little and then retighten it. And it lines up perfectly right here. And the housing will push. I mean, it's got a little bit of to push in a little. Perfect. So... There you go, guys. That's the wiring for the DRL and the turn signal and the mirror. I'll be back to show you the puddle lights when I ever, when I get to that. Here's the factory mirror with the factory turn signal. And here's the new one.
Oh, it has a little LED on this side too. I didn't realize that. Cool. So it can be seen from behind a little bit. Nice. Just like it has a turn signal there, of course. Yeah. All right. I ran the black and red wire. Black and red wire through the hole that this piece comes out of. I undid that rubber grommet from the door. It wasn't that hard. I just pushed it with a screwdriver from the inside a little bit. This one down here was a little harder. It's got like a hard plastic ring on it. So this is that tube, that rubber tube that goes between the door and the, you know, the rest of the car. So I ran a coat hanger up, as you can see, through, just straight up through. You can see the coat hanger. I just shoved it all the way up. I had to cut a hole for the darn thing to go through that rubber up there. I had to cut a hole with an X-Acto blade. I, I kept pushing and I saw where the coat hanger was pushing against and I took an X-Acto knife, of course, and cut a hole. And then now I have to, I'm gonna, um, like I did with pulling the wire through the mirror, I'm gonna smash that up there and then make it as narrow as possible so it doesn't catch on any wires or anything coming down there. And that has to go down through there through that hole where all those wires are going through, and then out here. Uh, see if you can see. Right through that hole there. There it is. <laughs> oh man, it's harder to find than I thought. So once I get the wires through there, I'll, I'll run them up like under behind the dash and all the way across up through the middle and everything somehow. But right now my concern is getting that wire, those wires through there and in that, through that rubber between the door piece. So as soon as I get that through and get that wiring in through so I can see it on the floor on the other side there. Oh, by the way, I had to remove the like step panel and that kick panel, which you just pull, you just pull this one right off. This one I had to kind of pry with a pry tool and mess with it on this bottom hole right there. It was a booger. It was a green one. You can see some of the green plastic got stuck in that hole. Anyway, I'll keep you guys watching here um it'll be forever for me and just a second for you <laughs> all right so i got that wire through there then what i did was i ran it up over top of that plastic tab that looks like it fastens the dash to the frame then i ran it underneath or over top that wire harness loom there then on the other side i ran a coat hanger through you can see the opening on the transmission tunnel between the transmission tunnel and all the other stuff there's an opening there i ran it through and i hooked the wire to it and i'm going to pull it through I'll show you guys how to get the glove compartment um, door, the glove compartment cover door off. Let's see if I can get this through here. Looks like it's coming. Oh, good. So I pulled it through this side and then I'll run it up in here up here is where somewhere up in there and i'll i'll show you more from the front um in a little bit here let's see if i can pull this the rest of the way through there we go all right plenty of plenty of wire more than enough wire so 
if it twists and turns while you're pulling it, if it doesn't make like a straight shot from across the other side of the car, then you're good to go still because there's tons of wire. Good to go. All right, so I got that pulled over here. That's done. Again, I'm still working on the passenger side. And I'll show you guys how to take that glove compartment door off. So this piece is connected in here. Um, on that little tab, this little goes through that hole. Just go on. <laughs> All right. There. That stays in there like that. And then it hooks to this. When it's connected and in the car and you haven't, you know, like you haven't messed with it yet, you just squeeze, squeeze that real good. And then you can pull that off to the side. And then once that's done, you push this in really a whole lot. You, on each side, you push here and here, and it pushes that tab and that tab out of out of that little cut out there and then you it'll drop right down that's how you get that out so um so you can't really see the wire too much up in here so that's good um you can kind of push it up and tuck it up around there and maybe zip tie it to this i'm gonna zip tie it there just because and good to go I'll be back when I, well, hang on a second. Let me show you on the dashboard covers and stuff. Of course, you want to take this thing off again. I didn't take this off yet. I was just, what I'm trying to do is find the wire. Um, I know uh, the video on Subi Speed for the STI, it shows a, I believe it's a pink and blue wire. And... I found a pink and blue wire in the WRX, so I think it's the same. And I'm gonna show you on camera if I can find my Phillips head screwdriver. Where'd I put that? I spend more time looking for tools than I do anything else. It's a doggone it. <laughs> oh, there it is. Urgh. You know, I hate that when you're like, where'd I put the dang thing? You spend 10 minutes looking for a tool or longer take this well this piece here that covers here I took this first I pulled the weather stripping away off to the side and then I just used this pry tool and pried in here and got this cover off it's just it's not in with any bolts or anything fancy just looks like some clips that's gone. Then you got this screw. Take that off. Okay. Then Here's a good place to grab it, right here. There, perfect. And then there's, you can see right there, <laughs> there's a tab. Come on. All right. 
got that thing off. Um, I might unplug it later, all these plugs to get it out of the way. <clears throat> the wire that is in the Subi Speed video on the STI, it looks like the WRX has the same wire. Now remember on the door for the DRL, it was a green and black wire, which was a different colored wire than the STI video for the DRL. But there, for the puddle lamp black wire, where it connects to, this plug has the same color, which is a pink and blue, which you can see four wires down from the top. That's where we put the black wire for the puddle lamps. Um, and that's not very much wire to work with. I might cut into the black conduit or black cover there to get to the wire at a different spot. And then the red wire goes to the seat heater, which is, there's the little chart. And that would be this one right here. So you unplug that, put the Adafuse fuse in, <clears throat> connect the red wire to that Adafuse, fuse and, you know, tie in the other red wire from the other side into that same red wire. And then both black wires go to that pink and blue wire on this gray plug on the BIU or a body integrated unit. And that is pl plugs in right over there. So it's the white plug. And then below that is the gray plug that you unplug to get to that wire. Once I get all that wiring hooked up and the black wires, the red wire, um, well, black wire and red wire, because I've only got the right side put a lamp in so far. I will close the doors and unlock the car and then see if the puddle lamp works. And then we'll know that that's correct on this um, WRX. Thanks for watching this far, guys. Hope it's helped. So it really helped to unplug those from that panel. And I got those kind of out of the way. And then this plug was behind here and electric taped around here. And I undid that electrical tape so I could have more access to this. And I'll make a nice carefully cut up here and access that blue and pink wire. I'll access that blue and pink wire to tap the black wires in. So guys, I got the black wire T-tapped into the blue and pink wire. Of course, I just have the one side installed. I'm going to install the driver's side without making a video because it'll be the same on the driver's side. If it isn't for the DRL on the turn signal and if it's a different color wire, you will have already seen that video back a ways in this video that hey, the driver's side's a different color light for the power for the DRL. If it obviously isn't a different color, you won't see that on the video. So anyway, here is that part. I took the Adafuse fuse and plugged it into the seat heater. It already had that fuse in it with the kit, so I just took the blue fuse out and plugged that right in there, connected that to the red wire of the puddle light. And by the way, if you guys are wondering what <laughs> this big black cable is, most of you probably know it's for the access port. I just, you know, bunched it up and it hides behind here perfectly when everything's on because I put a docker up here on my vent. Need that access port if you're going to do any kind of mods, really. So let's go see if this puddle light works. It does. So the door is open over there. I noticed that the puddle light comes on when you open or close the door. It's interesting. And it takes a bit for it to turn off here. And then once it turns off, I'll operate the fob. It looks like it's flickering when I'm looking at it on the phone, but in person it is not flickering, I assure you. It is not flickering. Sometimes on phones, like the instrument panel looks like it's flickering and it isn't. And apparently the puddle light looks like it's flickering on the phone now. Now it's off. 
I'm going to operate the fob and unlock it. There it goes. Yes. So it works, guys. I've just shown you how to install those. This with the DRL and sequential and the mirrors with the fancy LED signal on it. I, it's, it is my hope that it, this has helped you a great deal and you don't have to do all this research like I did. Here's my Punisher skull. This car is my baby, my baby. And to me, these lights on the mirrors are a worthwhile install. It might not be for you to do all of these lights, but now you can see um, whichever part of the install you want to do, you can do it correctly on the WRX. Let's see it go off. It went off. I'm going to open the door. I'm just going to open it. It's open and I closed it and that makes it come on too. So God bless you. And again, hope this video really helped you.